Hi everybody, this is Joshua Kirk, back with you guys once again on YouTube. And now it's time for episode 42 of Album of the Day. And uh, once again, just like what I've been doing lately, um, I've been taking a break from album reviews. The reason I've been taking longer breaks than uh, before with album reviews was because... Um, uh, you may know, I, I got a busy life and, you know, just uh, a lot of things going on in my life that, you know, I can't do a review every weekend, uh, although I, I wanted to, but, you know, of course, you know, there are times where it didn't feel like it, where I just took a break, because I do this for fun, I don't do it just for doing it, I just, I, uh, I, I do it for fun, so that's why. I've been taking long breaks lately, but I'm back, I'm fresh, and it's time for another review. So today's band is um, an English rock band who um, have pretty much uh, been the kind of band that, you know, isn't afraid to try new things. That kind of makes this in sort of this uh, alternative rock sound with like uh, a ton of experimentation and complexity behind it, that it makes them one of the most, you know, uh, one of the most complex bands around. Uh, they're a band by the name of Muse. Uh, they, um, they started out as kind of this independent, kind of indie band for, at first, with their first few records, and then eventually they turned, uh, into, like, these guys that were signed to a major label that, obviously, um, got a little more popular, got a little more attention. Uh, so, I'm here to review Muse's uh, 2001 sophomore album. The album is called Origin of Symmetry, and this is on an independent label, Taste uh, Media Limited, but uh, this is actually uh, a reissue release that's on Warner Brothers Records. Um, so, um, so this is uh, the first time in a while that I'm reviewing an album that's like on a major label. Uh, so oh, there you go. Uh, so so anyway, here's the cover, and I love this cover art on there. It's really cool. Uh, the spine, yeah, the spine, and there's the back of the album. The songs on here are Newborn, Bliss, Space Dementia. Hyper Music, Plug In Baby, Citizen Erased, Micro Cuts, Screenager, Dark Shines, Feeling Good, and uh, Meg Megalomania. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, so this album was released on July 17th, 2001. And, uh, you know, this album brought out a lot of, like, just smash hits for the band. Songs like Newborn and Bliss and uh, Plug In Baby and, uh, and and songs like that, as well as their cover of Feeling Good, which is on here. Um, and, you know, this album is a little different from their debut album, Showbiz, which came out in 1999, for a few reasons. One, it introduced more unusual instruments into the mix, while still maintaining the piano and guitar driven sound of Muse that was such a huge part of their debut, Showbiz. Um, so, and uh, so there you go. Uh, now I'm going to show you the inside of the packaging of this album. Um, and it's got the lyrics. And got a, a, a bunch of really cool artwork going on. I like this artwork. So that's the booklet, and um, here's the uh, CD. So that's the packaging for Origin Asymmetry. Um, so there you go. Um, 
So this album uh, opens with uh, track number one, Newborn, and it starts out with Matthew Bellamy playing this uh, electric piano line, uh, and then coming in there's acoustic piano and a little bit of cymbal, so it's like a, a softer intro uh, uh, for, for a Muse song, which kind of, it, I think it's really cool how Muse does these songs that have a softer intro but just a really heavy, in-your-face uh, rest of the song. And I feel like they do, they do just that with Newborn, starting out with a keyboard and cymbal-driven intro, and then coming in to this really heavy, killer um, blur, uh, range for the rest of the song with distorted, with just distorted guitars, brutally fuzzy bass, and mm, brutally fuzzy bass, and just loud drumming. It's like boom, boom, boom. Uh, and uh, in this, you know, song, and this is a song kind of uh, about, you know, like, you know, there's definitely, like, we always have this kind of bitterness growing inside of us, you know, so it's kind of a song about that. So it sort of leaves you to believe that the lyrics on this album are pretty powerful and, and you know, pretty, you know, intense, uh, intense, um, like, lyrics about death and about bad relationships and a bunch of stuff like that. Track number two is called Bliss, and, uh, and it's driven mostly by these little piano arpeggios that, like, uh, dr drive, that, like, drive the song. And then coming in, there's uh, the driving guitars, bass, and drums. And uh, and this is kind of a song about, you know, wanting the peace and joy in someone's mind, even if that person is is not the right one for us. And then there's Space Dementia, which, uh, you know, I will tell you this. Matthew Bellamy is, uh, is just a great piano player. He definitely sounds like he's done a lot of training and practicing when he was a child, it sounds like. Because he's just, you know, he plays all these notes on the piano that just sounds so inspired and, you know, just sounds so complex and intense. I bet you these piano lines that Muse do would be a lot more challenging to practice than maybe, say, uh, uh, than maybe, say, classical piano. So, so it definitely does sound like some of the piano lines and some of the music songs are is probably inspired by like a bunch of old classical music and stuff by like you know classical piano stuff it is exactly what like uh songs uh like this kind of sound like um and uh of course it's a song about like um like uh uh a person, it's kind of about a, a relationship where, like, you find that person that obviously is, like, the person that's obviously not good for you, but, like, at the same time, you just can't help but just want to be with them. So it's kind of a song about, like, how just you kind of get this sickening feeling inside of you because you love somebody that's obviously, that, that obviously isn't that good of a person, you know, so, so, you know, the lyrics on here are pretty dramatic, because it kind of, you know, does, you know, kind of talk about being psychologically sick, uh, because of, you know, a really bad relationship that you may have dealt with, um, so, so, like, the lyrics on here are pretty personal on here, you know, because a majority of them are about relationships that have kind of gone bitter, uh, for the most part, um, and musically the song sounds excellent, the piano on there just sounds killer, and, uh, like, unlike most of the other Muse songs, they're pretty guitar driven, this one is more driven by piano, and, and then it has this weird little bridge where, like, there's, like, little, some little funky keyboard thing or something, as well as a string section, as well as Ma Matthew Blaney's voice sounding all psychedelic with like some echo, some sort of echo thing on it, on it. Like, uh, you know, like Matt Blaney's voice 
sounds pretty normal, like, uh, in the verses, but, like, by the bridge, it has that psychedelic effect going on, on it. So, so, so this is definitely a song that's definitely a perfect example of Muse going a little psychedelic, because, you know, sure, these guys may be, like, sure, these guys may sound like metal bands, like Metallica and stuff like that. Sure, they may sound all metally like that, but they're definitely beyond the regular hard rock band. Uh, track number four is called Hyper Music, and this one's a little more back to basics rock. Um, and, you know, it's kind of a song about, like, you know, like, in the past, you lied to somebody, saying you loved them, and then, and then you realize later, and you try really hard to convince them that you don't want them anymore. So, so it's kind of a song, you know, that kind of, you know, is kind of angry musically without being vulgar or anything like that. <laughs> um... I like that. Track number five is called Plug In Baby. And, you know, th this song pretty much needs no introduction. I mean, if you're watching this video, if you've been a Muse fan for years and uh, know this song, you know, th this one probably doesn't need, uh, a, it doesn't need a really big introduction. It's kind of this, you know, rock and roll song that's, Definitely known for its little like like the guitar like uh, the guitar sounds is like like the guitar sounds like it was inspired by like, classical music or something and then Chris Wolston home Holmes bass is just brutally fuzzy it's like like that like you know like like you know like. Muse is definitely one of those bands known for having bass that's just brutally fuzzy. I mean, if you can't handle brutally fuzzy things in music, well, then Muse is probably not the band for you. But, but, but you know, if you like, but if you like your music with a little oomph to it, Muse is definitely right up your alley. Um, like, like I'm a ba I'm a fan of bands who are just, you know all about just, you know, straight up uh, experimentation and noise, and I feel this band kind of succeeds on that. Track number six is called Citizen Erased, and this song, if you're a Muse fan, you know this one for sure. Um, this one's a fan favorite. It's been performed at over a thousand Muse shows, and uh, it's like considered the band's most well-known song, even though it isn't a single. Um, like, uh, it's definitely known for its distorted guitar riffs and fuzzy bass and loud drums. You know, it's, it's definitely known for all that. Um, and then, like, the vocals on here, you know, sound pretty distorted in the verses. But during, like, that weird little, like, softer part, like, uh, like the softer verses, you know, Matt, Matthew Blamey's voice gets... Uh, toned down a little bit and uh, so so like it turns from like this heavy rock song and then eventually you know um in the middle of it it strips down a little bit with the drums getting softer the guitars and bass getting softer and then and it also has uh this it also has a, a vibraphone like and like in that and and they even and and they and Muse even snuck in a vibraphone to this little softer part, like a little jazzy vibraphone in the background, which kind of makes sense because Chris is credited playing vibraphone. So I definitely most likely hear it on this song, Citizen Erased. Um, and then coming in, there's a, a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of like subtle organ coming in too. Um, and then by, like, the end, it's, like, very psychedelic and has this nice little piano line at the end, as well as these weird little, like, uh, synthetic uh, echo sound effects in the background. Track number seven is called Micro Cuts, and uh, this is definitely a perfect example of a song that's rather, you know, that, that, that's rather dramatic uh, lyrically, I mean. Like, uh, for example, like, 
to me, uh, sorry about that. Like to me, the song "Micro Cuts" is a perfect example of uh, Muse talking about death and their lyrics and making it sound dramatic. I mean, these lyrics are pretty much dramatic, no matter how you look at them. Um, and uh, you know, this song uh, has some pretty dis ha has like Matthew Blamey doing this distorted falsetto that I think sounds really nice on top of everything. Like, uh, I think Matt totally has one of the most distinctive voices I've ever heard, and his voice is just really strong and powerful. Eh, powerful, so, so I really do feel like Matthew's voice totally... Uh, so, so Matthew Bellamy is pretty much, he's definitely like a trained vocalist, a trained piano player, and definitely a trained guitar player. He, he seems to have had a lot of training, which makes Matthew Bellamy being one of the most professional sounding acts out there. Uh, acts out there, which, so, so it kind of makes sense. He's the leader of this band, so because he, he kind of adds into kind of the musical challenges that the band kind of puts on themselves. Uh, so, and, uh, and the song uh, sounds like it was kind of inspired by classical music, like it has this uh, key, it has like this synthesizer in the background that sounds like it's imitating a choir or something like that over really heavy guitars, bass, and drums. Track number eight is called Screenager, and this is one song that is truly one of the most uniquely uh, arranged songs on this album. Dominic Howard, the drummer of Muse, uh, used all this weird percussion. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's this website called Muse Wiki, which is like Wikipedia only. It talks all about Muse. Um, it's a really cool website, and on that website, I got to find out how they made the weird percussion on Screenager. Uh, like they used human bones, and like like they used like exotic animal bones as percussion on this song. Uh, and, and I heard it was inspired by Tom Waits, and that totally makes sense to me. I mean, I mean Dominic, I mean Dominic Howard's percussion on uh, this song totally reminds me of Tom Waits' Bone Machine. It's because the percussion on there is really bony and apocalyptic and you know, so 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 I'm pretty sure they probably listened to maybe Bone Machine by Tom Waits before recording this one. So that was kind of so in fact Tom Waits is what inspired the weird percussion on this song. Uh, so 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 I think uh, so, so I think the percussion on this song is really what makes this song sound so complex and different, different uh, by using the animal bones on here. Um, oh, and, and, and like to accompany the weird percussion, there's like an acoustic guitar, a little bit of bass, actual drums. Uh, so it kind of starts out kind of bony, like Tom Waits, uh, with the percussion especially, but then by uh, but then by the chorus, uh, it sounds more like kind of a, a later Beatles song with the synth with the synthesizer and did I hear a vibraf and and do I hear a vib and do I hear a vibraphone in that in that chorus too? If I do, cool. Um, like interesting how they kind of turn it kind of turns from this rather, you know crazy Tom Waits-esque tune in the verses to like, um, to like, uh, to like this, like, later Beatles-esque type tune in the chorus, uh, with, uh, with the weird synthesizer and, uh, the vibraphone thing that, that, that's, like, a vibraphone is, is credited in the line road, so, so, so I believe there is a vibraphone I'm hearing in that weird, later Beatles-esque uh, point of the song. Track number... Okay. Track number nine is called Dark Shines, and once again, it's kind of a song about a bad relationship. Like, you know, it's kind of talks about, you know, a girl that obviously the narrator met that, it, that, that, that he ends up falling in love with and then ends up, you know, getting 
feeling down about it because of him realizing all the flaws with that, realizing all the flaws with that girl, realizing that, like, like, like he's feeling very, very sore and very, very, he's feeling very down because, um, of the relationship turning into a good thing for him when in reality it's a, it's a very tragic thing to fall in love with somebody that isn't good for you. So, so I can see why these songs are a little more, have a lot, so I can see why these songs have a little more depth if they talk about a relationship in a more relationship bond bitter kind of way instead of just being all sugary and, and like, like they don't need, like, uh, nobody needs to be all sugary. And, and thankfully, Muse totally, when they write a song about a relationship, they add a little depth and make it sound a lot more depressing. Saying, but you know, it's not depressing enough to make you feel depressed. In fact, listening to this band totally makes me feel alive. Uh, and this song is pretty unique musically. It has, like, elements of Spanish music going on there. Like, the electric guitar on this totally sounds like Spanish music. And then there's, like, this really intense piano chord that goes on during the chorus when the guitars, bass, and drums get heavier. Track number 10 is a uh, Muse's cover of Feeling Good, and, uh, and, and let me say, so there are some covers out there that are good, others just mediocre, but, but, but this one totally, you know, uh, uh, but, but this is definitely, uh, one of my favorite, uh, band covers. I totally think Muse's cover of Feeling Good totally, uh, worked totally works uh, with, with the rest of this album. It has this nice little, like, uh, like 70s-esque electric piano. Um, and then coming in, there's the guitars, bass, and drums. And, and then there's, like, the, this nice string section in the background, too. But then there's one other weird part to the song, which is sort of Muse adding their own little twist to a really old song. Like, uh, in the third verse... Matthew Bellamy sounds as if he's singing into a megaphone or something like that because it's really distorted. Like, in fact, he probably did use a megaphone for that part. And, and then it closes, and then this album closes off with uh, track number 11, uh, Megalomania, which um, starts out with kind of this weird little, like, uh, like distorted, like maybe a string intro or something like that. And then coming in, there's the acoustic guitar, the bass, and the drums. Like, there is electric guitar on this song, but it's kind of way in the background. Which kind of makes sense, because the instrument that really does lead the song, that really does make it so top-notch and creative, is the use of a church organ. In fact, Muse actually went to an actual church to record the pipe organ that you hear in the song. Which kind of makes sense, because it definitely does sound like a church organ. It's all gothic sounding and, you know, uh, all that. Um, and, uh, and uh, like, you know, so like, uh, and I heard that, you know, and, and I read that due to the importance of the pipe organ on this song, this song is performed live so rarely, which kind of makes sense, because without the pump organ, the song would be lacking. It's it's just, you know, it would be lacking the drama that's definitely uh, there in the song without that pipe organ. So I can see why that song is performed live so rarely because the pipe organ is like required pretty much, not only figuratively, but like literally, you know, for the song. Song, uh, it says, so I, so I think it's really the pipe organ that totally makes this song stand out and, and make such a and make it such a great way to close the album with something really powerful like this. So overall I, I have pretty much no complaints whatsoever about this album. It's definitely a, a very diverse and very complex album, but at the same time really, really simple too. Uh well too. Uh but you know still really complex. I really like how Muse is the kind of band that kind of challenges themselves to try new things. They're not afraid to try new things. Like, on pretty much every album, they've tried something, at least something new, pretty much. Like, 
If you're new to the Muse, if you're just watching this video, and if you're a newbie to this band, I would recommend starting with this album, because this album to me, uh, I bet you if you if uh, if you find the band Muse in the dictionary, this is probably a, a, a it probably have the it probably have a picture of this on it, because to me this is the definition of Muse. It's what they were meant to be. Like like this album is totally what they were meant to be. So so I recommend starting with this, and I highly recommend checking out some of their other records. Absolutions, an amazing album. Like Absolutions, a really killer album. I recommend that. And so, so I recommend starting kind of more indie stuff before you punch into the more mainstream experimental stuff that you would find on albums like Black Holes and Revelations and The Resistance. Um, so I give this album, so, so, so this album is definitely a 9 out of 10 for me because it's just a fantastic album. It's really killer. So, so I highly recommend this. So this is Joshua Kurt signing off.